the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Our God is majestic in holiness, awesome in splendor, and worthy of our highest praise. Our God blew back the waters, prepared a path through the sea, and appeared as a pillar of fire to light the pilgrim way. The Lord is our strength and our salvation. Let us pray. Almighty God, you call your church to witness that in Christ we are reconciled to you. Help us so to proclaim the good news of your love, that all who hear it may turn to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. When we pass through deep waters or go through fiery trial, the Lord our God has promised to be with us. With confidence in God, our Creator, our Redeemer, our Deliverer, come, let us confess our sins. Merciful God, we are quick to ask for grace when we have fallen short for patience when we have stubbornly turned away from you. Why are we slow to show the same mercy to others? We keep track of wrongs and cling to old hurts, rather than offering the forgiveness that could free others and ourselves. We strive to be more faithful, Lord. We want to be more loving. So we come before you once again to ask for patience and grace. Transform us, we pray. Pour out your mercy upon us until it flows forth from us through acts of love. Amen. Do not fear, says the Lord, for I have brought you through the deep waters. Friends, behold, God is doing a new thing. And now it springs forth. I have delivered you, says the Lord. By the grace of Jesus Christ, we are made new. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel.
rejoicing in the new life that we know in Jesus Christ. Let us love and forgive one another. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us find a way to share Christ's peace with one another. <clears throat> Good morning and welcome to worship here on this bright September day here at Frederick Presbyterian Church. If you have found us for the first time on Facebook, we are glad you did and hope that you and everyone else watching and worshiping with us this morning will look and see all that is happening or getting ready to happen in the life and ministry and work of Frederick Presbyterian Church. Lots of programs and activities and study groups have already begun or are getting ready to start. Look at the weekly announcements in the worship guide as well as all that is happening on the, on the web page to see how you might join in on all that is happening here at Frederick Presbyterian Church. Next Sunday afternoon, September 20th, we will gather at Staley Park at 4 o'clock for an outdoor worship service. Details are found on the website and in the weekly announcements. Because of that service happening at 4 o'clock, there will not be a 9 o'clock a.m. in-person worship service here at the church, but the 10.30 virtual Facebook service will happen as usual at 10.30 a.m. This morning, we hear the continued story of Moses, but children and others listen to just this part of the story and then later in the service hear the rest of it. God gave Moses a big job. Moses had to stand up to a very stubborn king who was making God's people work as slaves. God told Moses to go to Pharaoh and say, let my people go. But Pharaoh said, no, I will not let God's people go. Pharaoh wanted the people to worship him, not God. So God used ten ways called plagues to change Pharaoh's mind. God turned the Nile to blood. The river began to stink. Pharaoh watched the river turn red, knew his people could not drink, and Pharaoh still said no. God sent frogs to hop everywhere, even into the beds. Pharaoh heard his bakers scream when frogs jumped out of their breads, and Pharaoh still said no. God thought night gnats might change Pharaoh's mind so the people could go free. Gnats swarmed people, goats and cows. There was no place to flee, and Pharaoh still said, no. Flies, thought God, will do the trick. And so God sent a zillion. Pharaoh's house filled up with flies. Outside there were a million, and Pharaoh still said, no. God now struck down Pharaoh's herds. The camels all were ill. The donkeys, horses all got sick. His cows fell down, but still, and Pharaoh still said no. Oozy, gooey, icky sores on everybody's skin. God knocked and knocked on Pharaoh's heart. Pharaoh never let God in, and Pharaoh still said no. Hail pounded, thunder crashed, Pharaoh's plants laid down, not a tree stood anywhere, all were on the ground, and Pharaoh still said, no. Let my people go, said God, or I will send a swarm of locusts to devour what's left, to do your land more harm, and Pharaoh still said, no. Now darkness covered Pharaoh's land, the sun did not appear, no one could move, no one could see, still Pharaoh would not hear, and Pharaoh still said, no. The last and saddest plague of all brought sobs throughout the lands. Parents cried as their children died. Finally, Pharaoh changed his plans. Pharaoh let God's people go. The story does not end there. Listen for the rest of the story. Let us pray together. Lord God, may you guide us as you did the children of Israel. 
a cloud by day and fire by night. And as the psalmist declared, may your word be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our first lesson comes from the book of Exodus. The angel of God, who was going before the Israelite army, moved and went behind them. And the pillar of cloud moved from in front of them and took its place behind them. It came between the army of Egypt and the army of Israel. And so the cloud was there with the darkness, and it lit up the night. One did not come near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night and turned the sea into land, and the waters were divided. The Israelites went into the sea on dry ground, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went into the sea after them, all of Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and chariot drivers. At the morning, watched the Lord in the pillar of fire, and cloud looked down upon the Egyptian army, and threw the Egyptian army into panic. He clogged their chariot wheels so that they turned with difficulty. The Egyptians said, Let us flee from the Israelites, for the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea so that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and chariot drivers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and at dawn the sea returned to its normal depth. As the Egyptians fled before it, the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the chariot drivers. The entire army of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea, not one of them remained. But the Israelites walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great work that the Lord did against the Egyptians. So the people feared the Lord and believed in the Lord and in his servant, Moses. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to join now in the reading in unison of the Canticle of Miriam and Moses. I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. Horse and rider he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my might, and he has become my salvation. This is my God, and I will praise him. My Father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a warrior. The Lord is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and his army he cast into the sea. His picked officers were sunk in the Red Sea. The floods covered them. They went down into the depths like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, glorious in power. Your right hand, O Lord, shattered the enemy. In the greatness of your majesty, you overthrew your adversaries. You sent out your fury. It consumed them like stubble. At the blast of your nostrils, the waters piled up. The flood stood up in a heap. The deeps congealed in the heart of the sea. The enemy said, I will pursue. I will overtake. I will divide the spoil. My desire shall have its fill of them. I will draw my sword. My hand shall destroy them. You blew with your wind. The sea covered them. 
They sank like lead in the mighty waters. Who is like you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, majestic in holiness, awesome in splendor, doing wonders? Then the prophet Miriam, Aaron's sister, took a tambourine in her hand, and all the women went out after her with tambourines and with dancing. And Miriam sang to them, Sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. Horse and rider he has thrown into the sea. Our second reading this morning comes from, comes from Paul's letter to the Romans. Welcome those who are weak in faith, but not for the purpose of quarreling over opinions. Some believe in eating anything, while the weak eat only vegetables. Those who eat must not despise those who abstain, and those who abstain must not pass judgment on those who eat, for God has welcomed them. Who are you to pass judgment on servants of another? It is before their own Lord that they stand or fall, and they will be upheld, for the Lord is able to make them stand. Some judge one day to be better than another, while others judge all days to be alike. Let all be fully convinced in their own minds. Those who observe the day, observe it in honor of the Lord. And those who eat, eat in honor of the Lord, since they give thanks to God. While those who abstain, abstain in honor of the Lord and give thanks to God. We do not live to ourselves and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For this end, Christ died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother or sister? Or you, why do you despise your brother or sister? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then, each of us, will be accountable to God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The gospel of, gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Then Peter came and said to Jesus, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to Peter, not seven times, but I tell you, 77 times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him, and as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold, together with his wife and children, and all his possessions and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii, and seizing him by the throat, he said, Pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave! I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Over the last several weeks, we've heard portion, portions of scripture from the book of Exodus, all leading up to today's story, the crossing of the Red Sea. Now, I don't know about you, but when I hear this story, for some reason, the image of a high school football game comes to my mind. The crowd is in the bleachers, and the two teams are gathered on their respective sidelines, huddled together as a team, each praying to their God for victory. I don't know why that image comes to my mind. Over the last several weeks, we've heard about the birth of Moses, and We've heard about Moses being high on the mountain with the burning bush, and we heard about God calling Moses to go and tell Pharaoh to let God's people go. We've heard about the first Passover and God passing over the houses of the Israelites as the firstborn of the Egyptian households were all smitten. I don't know why I also come to this story, and I don't know why or how or what to think about it. I mean, there's such violence in, in this story, and God, our God, is right there in the middle of it all. All of this story is part of this huge meta-narrative of the Old Testament, and like I said, today we hear the culmination of the story. Today's reading is as if we've turned the channel in the middle of April and all of a sudden we come across Charlton Heston and the Ten Commandment movie is playing. The Israelites had been held captive as slaves for many, many years in the land of Egypt. They were oppressed, treated poorly, beaten, worked literally to death. And they cried out to their God, and their God heard their cry. I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt, said God. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings. 
I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey. Their God heard their cry, and their God did something about it. Their God sent Moses to lead them out, but not so quickly as Moses would find out. First, Moses had to prove himself to his fellow Israelites. God, they will not believe that you have sent me. How will they know? Tell them, I am have sent you. And show them who I am. So Moses, with the help of God, in the sight of all the people, turned a stick into a snake, made his own hand get covered with a dreaded skin disease, and then healed it again, turned some water from the river into blood. And they believed who he was. And they worshipped the God who sent him. Next, Moses and his brother Aaron go to Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, with the message from their God. Our God said, let my people go. Uh, Said Pharaoh, who is this God of yours? Pharaoh was more unyielding than ever before. In fact, he made their workday harder and longer. Moses went to God and said, God, you told me to go. I went and did as you told me to do, and now look what happened. Trust me, Moses. My people will be released, but first, because of the stubbornness of the Pharaoh, there must be more hardship for all. So Moses goes back to the king of Egypt land. The king says, Ha! Who is this God of yours that I should let Israel go? So to prove who sent them, Moses does his little stick-into-snake trick for the Pharaoh. Pharaoh is not impressed. In fact, he summoned his magicians to do the same, and they do it. Moses goes back to God. God sent Moses back to the king. This time, Moses turns the entire Nile River into blood. But guess what? The king's magicians do the same thing. Moses goes back to God. God sends Moses back to the king. This time, Moses and Aaron cause the land to be filled with frogs everywhere. Even the king's bed was filled with frogs, but the king's magicians do the same thing. Next came gnats, but the magicians couldn't do that. And they even say, God has done this. But Pharaoh was too stubborn to listen. Next came flies, then dead animals, then sores all over the people and all the animals that were left. Then came hailstones, then locusts, and then darkness. But the king would not give in, not until the night of the Passover of the Lord. The Lord told the people of Israel to mark their homes with the blood of the Lamb. And God went through the land and killed the firstborn of every home except for those homes marked with the blood of the Lamb. The king and all of Egypt were so horrified by the event, he called Moses right away and said, Get your people out of my country and leave us alone. So the Lord led them out of that dreaded land of Egypt. During the day, the Lord went ahead of his people in a thick cloud, and during the night, he went ahead of them in a flaming fire. And the Pharaoh and the people of Egypt wanted them out of their land so badly that the Egyptian armies pushed them, chased them, really, out of their country. They made it to the Red Sea with the Egyptian army chasing them all the way, Moses stretched out his hand. The wind blew and blew, and the waters parted. The dry land appeared, and Moses and the people of Israel crossed over to the other side, and the waters came crashing down on those that sought to do them harm. 
They get to the other side, <clears throat> and the people of God sang praises. For the Lord had delivered them from slavery, led them to safety, and destroyed their oppressors. Their oppressors. I will sing praises to the Lord for his great victory. The Lord is my strength, the reason for my song, because the Lord has saved me. I will praise and give honor the Lord. He is my God and the God of my ancestors. The people of God had every reason to sing and shout and to play tambourines and to celebrate for their God had delivered them from all that would seek to destroy them. Their God had brought them to a new land. Their God's promise had been fulfilled. Now, it's important for me to hear this, that the people of Israel didn't do anything to bring about this act of salvation on God's part. In fact, the people of God rather doubted who Moses was, and they even doubted who Moses' God was all along. They, they even hoped that the Lord would punish Moses and Aaron for all this nonsense, and they were too discouraged to believe. They even complained to Moses and wished that they had never even left Egypt land. But God promised to deliver them anyway. God's promise had been made, and God's promise was good in spite of what the people of Israel did or didn't do, believed or didn't believe. At the beginning of this sermon, I said that today's reading is the culmination of the Old Testament meta narrative, that overarching grand story of Hebrew scripture. God's people are entrapped in a foreign land. They are weighed down with heavy burdens, too heavy to endure. God hears their cry. God sees their misery. And God feels their pain. And God promises to deliver them from all that would seek to destroy them. God promises to do something about it. And God makes a way for them to enter a new beginning, a new life. This is the story of God's deliverance of God's people. It's not too unlike the meta narrative of the New Testament. God sees God's people living in a land of deep darkness, and God sends God's Son to show them, to bring them a new way, a different life. This new way, this new life is so different from what anyone had known that the Son was killed, done away with. But God, even in the face of sure death, raises this son to new life. And God promises the same for the world as well. Now we are really, really good at thinking about all of this in spiritual terms, especially future terms. But the promise of God is that God is with us now, hearing us now, seeing us now, feeling our pain now, and promising to do something now. So wherever we are, however we are enslaved, however we are trapped, whatever weighs us down, whatever oppresses us, God hears us. God sees us. 
God feels our pain, and God promises to be with us. For God's promise is sure. I have seen how my people are suffering, and I have heard them call out for help. I feel sorry for them, and I have come down to save them. Brothers and sisters, God is working a new thing. God is bringing about a different way in our lives and in the life of the world. That is God's promise for us today. The very same promise as it was for the people of Israel. So hang on to that promise. And may we do what we can so that others know of God's promise of new life today. together in Christ, in the communion of the Holy Spirit, let us pray with one heart and mind to our God, saying, God of all mercies, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray that the love that passes ceaselessly between the Father and the Son in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit may renew and deepen the life of each Christian and draw us all gathered here into your unending life, we pray. God of all mercies, hear our prayer. For the leaders of the church, our staff, elders, deacons, teachers, choirs, members who long to please you, our God, for the leaders of our nations, world leaders, our president, Congress, our governor, and our legislature. For our mayor, city council, leaders of Frederick City and County. For so many who work in the world of public service. 
We pray that they might discern ways to overcome divisions and mistrust and may reflect your unity in every aspect of common life. God of all mercies, hear our prayer. For schools and families as they continue to find new paths of learning in the midst of COVID and all of its implications. For our families and households and our communities, that they may be places of communion and mutual support, which build us up and strengthen us in grace and truth, we pray. God of all mercies, hear our prayer. Thankful for our world that you made through Christ and renewed in the power of the resurrection, that we may be wise and careful stewards of creation, we pray. God of all mercies, hear our prayer. In the power of the Spirit, who joins our prayers to Christ's enduring intercession, we pray for the sick, those who suffer, and all who stand in need. We pray for the world, and Lord, all of the issues of dealing with this pandemic. We lift up leaders for difficult decisions, for those in research, and Lord, we pray especially for all who are just weary of continued isolation and loneliness. We pray today for those impacted by the wildfires in the western part of our nation, especially Oregon, the Pacific Northwest, other western states all battling these wildfires, for the devastating losses. And we pray especially for those who battle these fires day by day, moment by moment. for healing for all the world, we pray. God of all mercies, hear our prayer. People of God, for what else shall we pray? Gracious God, whom Jesus called Abba, Father, accept our prayers this day. By the inner workings of your Spirit, deepen our communion with you, the source and goal of our life, and make us more and more signs of your enduring love. This we pray through Christ, who lives and works with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Now grateful that we are free to unite in prayer, we pray in words Jesus taught his friends. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. All good gifts around us are sent from heaven above. Then thank the Lord, oh thank the Lord, for all God's love. Because of all that God has done for us, and because of all that God has given to us, out of great thanksgiving, we bring our offering, our tithes, our very selves to God.
The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have these gifts to offer, the fruit of our labor and of the skills you have given us. Take us and our possessions to do your work in the world. For we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives with you in unity with the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit and the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. <clears throat> Sisters and brothers, go in the name of the Lord. Proclaim the good news. Be persistent in prayer. Do the work of the gospel and carry out the ministry of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.